So um, I have a really bad cold, and Councilman Klein said if I cough out a lung, he would catch it. So I need to know where you are so I can heave it in that direction. <laughs> um, I'm Angela Petro, and I have a company called Two Caterers that I've had for 19 years. And then um, about a year ago, I decided to blow the entire thing up by starting Sorry. another company, just when I had everything really, really smooth. And um, I could literally coast at that point. And a lot of people were curious, why would you do this? Why would you blow everything up? And um, I asked myself that question a lot, especially when on the day after Thanksgiving, which was our first day in business, the woman that I hired as our kitchen manager, who was a lovely human being, but not suited to be our kitchen manager, um, I decided to let her back into the work environment. And uh, I took that position for myself because being the owner of a 19-year-old catering business and a fledgling restaurant just didn't seem like enough to take on. So, um, so that's what I did. And um, that was when I realized um, exactly how traumatic of a decision I had made. But, um, but I did it. And um, that started a really intense journey. And in, it was dog years because every day was seven days. And about four days into it, which was four times seven, 28 days, um, I had a meeting with my mentor. And I'm in an organization called Entrepreneur's Organization, and a colleague of mine is sitting in here who's in the same organization. It's wonderful. But I had a meeting with my mentor, and um, it was at the Columbus Club, which is a very formal, you know, kind of stuffy organization. And I walked in. I hadn't eaten. I had not slept more than a few hours. And I was uh, completely exhausted and stressed out. I was failing. I was carrying the entire thing on my back, literally failing. And I walked in. Um, I had read the handbook because the, this mentor is the CEO of a very large healthcare organization in Columbus, and you do your homework when you show up. And so I had to read the handbook the night before, and it said, be willing to go deep and be vulnerable. I vulnerabled all over the inside of the Columbus Club. I had vulnerability dripping from my eyelashes, like in big, fat, juicy little vulnerability drops. And I sat down, and I was like, I have got to hold my act together. Like, I was literally afraid I was going to, like, completely go hysterical. I was, like, that uh, traumatized. But um, I did hold it together, and I sat, and I had this very intense breakfast with like the CEO of this major healthcare organization, and he could see that I was incredibly fragile. Like I was fragile, like if you had touched me, I would have like been, ah! Uh, but I made it through this breakfast, and um, I kind of dumped on him. I was, and the things I dumped on him, I look back now and I'm like, wow, like hard on yourself much? But um, what I understood about myself at that moment is I had taken all these people on this journey with me that I was not ready to take them on because I wanted it. I wanted to open that restaurant. I wanted to open it then. I was going to do it. No one was going to talk me out of it, right? I can give you all the reasons like, oh, you know, we have all these dollars in the bank and we're burning cash and, you know, there's 37 reasons why we need to open. BS. I wanted to open the restaurant I, for my own reasons. We weren't ready. I had already burned through one potentially good employee, right? And I had taken these people on a ride, and we weren't ready. And they're looking at me, I'm the leader, and we are barely holding it together. I've got 30 employees following me around. It was a freaking clown show. Like, people were wearing giant clown shoes. We were getting out of a clown car every day, running into each other, slinging, like, macaroni and cheese soup. This recipe had worked for 10 years, and all of a sudden, like, it doesn't work. Like, everything you can imagine going wrong is going wrong, and it's a clown show, but I'm sitting with this mentor, and I'm, I'm as vulnerable as it gets that day, and I'm telling him this is my fault. Like, I thought I was Mussolini that day. Like, I was a horrible human being, and I was about to lead 30 people off a cliff. He let me go. Like, he didn't stop me. He didn't tell me, you know, aren't you being a wee bit hard on yourself, Mrs. Petro? 
Um, he let me go, and at the end of this breakfast, he said, you know, what do you need from me today? What do you need from me for the next 30 days before we meet again? And I, w I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know what I need for <laughs> Sleep? Like, do you have a cot in your car? Um, I, and I honestly just said, just thank you for the scrambled eggs and listening. Um, and thank you for making me read that handbook and allowing me to actually come here and be vulnerable to you right now. Because I couldn't, and I actually couldn't be vulnerable when I went back to that restaurant in front of any of those people. It reminded me, though, I needed to actually pull my act together, continue to be strong for them, start acting like a leader. There are places where it was okay to be vulnerable, and then there were places where I needed for people to believe in me. And we did get our act together, so for those of you who did eat the runny macaroni and cheese soup, I apologize. See me later for a credit. It's firm, it's delightful, it's cheesy, it's crisp, it's everything you want in a macaroni and cheese at this point. Um, but yeah, vulnerability is important, and, and, but it's also important, I th think, to understand when you can apply it, where to let it show, and then when people need to see you be a leader.